Yes, sir. How about you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Excited to get back into game week, and uh, obviously disappointed in, in last week. And uh, you know, to win a game at Clemson against a great football team, we needed to play our best and, and win the turnover margin and stay on the field on third down. Um, and we didn't do that. You know, just never really got in a rhythm in the football game. And uh, I thought our guys, you know, had great attitudes throughout the game. And uh, just needed to play an error-free game, you know, and create a bunch of turnovers. And, and uh, I thought we did a good job managing their run game, but uh, obviously didn't do a good enough job in coverage. Didn't get off the field the way that we have been on third down. Uh, offensively, didn't stay on the field the way we have been on third down. And just really a recipe for disaster against a great team. I thought Clemson played really well. And, uh, you know, as bad as we were playing early in the game, it's two minutes left in the half. We're down 14-0 and, and have the ball moving across the 50 and just had back-to-back -back turnover drives where we gave up 10 points. And, um, you know, not us, really, uh, which was probably the most disappointing part of the game to me, you know, win or lose. Um, we all expected to go in there and, and play the way we've been playing, you know, not beating ourselves, playing hard, playing tough, and, and giving ourselves a chance, and just didn't get that done. So, you know, as disappointing as it is, uh, we're five and one. We're getting ready for another game, and, and got a great game coming up uh, against a really good football team, um, team that's undefeated at home, and also a five-win team like us. So excited, you know, for the opportunity, and impressed with what Coach Babers has done and the way their players are playing. And a uh, big win for them last week in overtime, uh, finding a way to win. You know, and they lost an overtime game the week before, so it shows a lot of resiliency. And the biggest thing that jumps out, you know, they're plus eight in turnover margin uh, at Syracuse, which is very impressive. Uh, created 17 takeaways, which uh, leads our conference. And they've got an experienced group. Uh, you know, on offense, there's there's nine players uh, on offense that are either seniors or juniors, and on defense, four seniors and seven juniors. So a very experienced group. Uh, their returners are really good. Uh, they're punting and kicking the ball well, and they're playing well at home. And so you know, it's a really good matchup. It's a tough football team. Uh, you know, offensively, they're maximum speed tempo, and, and they're running the ball well. And their tailbacks are playing really good uh, for them. They run hard. They've got different body types that they can go to to change it up. They always have good receivers and big guys on the perimeter and quick guys in the slots. And they've got two quarterbacks that are playing well. Dungy always is, is uh, an aggressive, you know, fiery competitor and, and runs well. He's still their leading rusher by a few yards, has eight rushing touchdowns. Uh, and DeVito's come in in two games and played really well for him manages their offense, throws the football um, with accuracy. And uh, defensively, I think their D-line is really, really talented. You know, their two ends uh, are exceptional players. Uh, they've created a lot of plays in the backfield. And between them, there's 17 TFLs and 13 sacks between those two guys. Um, defensive tackle Slayton is a you know, redshirt senior, big guy, you know, 309-pound kid that uh, makes a lot of plays, four and a half TFLs. I know uh, having Cordy back for them in the secondary um, is, a, is a veteran guy, is a leader. You know, they've had some injuries at corner, but I thought their backup came in the game 23 and really played well in the fourth quarter against UNC. He was impressive. And uh, they do a lot, in the, uh, like a lot of the teams we've played here lately, you know, from Boston College, Virginia to Clemson, these guys are just like um, mirror images when you talk about their disruption. You know, there's a lot of uh, backfield plays. And uh, third down, they're fifth ranked in the country on third down defense. So, you know, for our offense, we need to bounce back. We've been tremendous on third down until Clemson. And a uh, good week for us to have another opportunity against a good defense to, to prove ourselves. And so looking forward to that. And, you know, 7 o'clock road game uh, at a place where they're playing for a bowl eligibility and a lot of excitement there uh, against a really good team. So with that, I'll open it up. After you lost the tape, what did you think? went wrong with Ryan and Kelvin? And what were your conversations like with them yesterday? You know, I don't know if there's any one thing. I just don't think we got in a rhythm. You know, I think for Ryan, I mean, he made a really good throw to Kelvin on the one drop, and that was probably a momentum play that could have helped us in the game. And, uh, you know, I think 
as a team when we got behind. Uh, one thing I think we've been really good at is just doing our job and playing with fundamentals and playing hard. And, and we got behind in that environment against a team that we really wanted to play well against and started to get away from our technique. I think guys started to try to do too much instead of just doing what the play calls them to do. And when you do that in football, it's never good. When you start trying to do too much or doing somebody else's job, you inevitably don't do your own. And it wasn't Ryan, it wasn't Calvin. I mean, it was across the board as a team. I think we just got away from what we were good at. And offensively, I don't care what offense you run, you know, I mean, if you're out every time on third down and you're getting stopped, it's really hard to have a rhythm in the game. Well, here, conversations like with them. Uh, Ryan hasn't had many bad games. This one looked like the Louisville game, though, in 16. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't put it that way. I mean, he had a couple throws he'd like to have back. Um, but he also had some good throws. And, you know, I told the whole team the same thing. Let's get back to being us. And uh, it is what it is. I mean, as much as we wanted to win that football game, we didn't play well enough to win. And they did. And everybody has to own that and move on. You can't let it beat us again. Is it almost easier to kind of flush away and forget and move on from a game like that where very little goes right than it would be one <laughs> yeah. where you go down there and play your best and just come up short? Probably so, you know, I mean, probably so. I mean, we just didn't give ourselves a chance to win the football game. And, and they did everything the way that we would have liked to have done it. They executed really well in, in the football game. And, you know, when you're playing in a, a game of any sort against a good opponent, you have to play to the best of your ability. You know, you have to make the plays that are there to make, and then you got to make a few that aren't and uh, create some plays. And when you play anybody, I don't care who it is in the ACC, you've got to be on point. And you can't turn the football over when you're driving. You can't, you know, have guys drop passes that they always catch. You know, I mean, it's just basic stuff. It's, it's what you have to be able to do, and it's what we've done. And I think that's the biggest thing I told the guys. You guys are a really good football team when you just do your job. And we just got to get back to that. You, uh, you mentioned the environment. You've got another interesting environment yeah. this weekend. Um, is, is, is there any difficulty? I mean, is there any big difference to playing indoors? Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that you've got an indoor facility here, does that make it a little easier to prepare for that? Uh, maybe so. You know, I mean, we'll practice in there. Um, we've played well uh, in the Dome when we've been up there. And, and obviously, this is a different team. So that doesn't mean anything for this year, obviously. But our guys have adjusted, you know. We played in a bowl game in the Dome a few years ago, played well. So, I mean, I think our preparation will be good to have them ready to play. We just got to go make the plays. Coach, I know it's early in the week, but there were several injuries uh, this past Saturday. Obviously, guys like Steph Lewis, Ricky Person, uh, two offensive linemen, and then C.J. Riley as well. Are there any updates on them at this point? I don't have anything for you, and I won't. Um, we're going to wait and see how long it takes these guys to get back. And, you know, I haven't talked to Justin yet. We meet at 3.30 today. But uh, all of them were feeling better. But I don't know where they're at yet. And how difficult is it to prepare for a two-quarterback system? Obviously, they want to play with Dungy as much as they can. But right. if he starts struggling going to DeVito, is it difficult to kind of plan for two different quarterbacks? Uh, it can be. Uh, it, you know, it depends on what they do differently. And we have enough film on DeVito to know kind of how things change. Um, Dungy creates a lot of plays on his feet, and he runs the ball a lot. And DeVito can run, but they just haven't used him that way as much. So you just kind of have to see what their plan would be if he goes in, and it's like it was in Florida State, it's like it was against UNC, then you know what the differences are. Coach, does the team really have its goals right now, knowing that it's going to be hard for Clemson to lose two games, obviously, the really good championship game? We don't control that. All we can control is winning the next game, you know? so. Like I told them, the only thing we've lost at this point is the right to control our own destiny. We control everything else. We've got six games on our schedule, and we need to approach it the same way we did the first five, one at a time. You mentioned uh, that it wasn't you, this isn't us. The pre-snap penalties had not been a problem for you probably since your last visit there. What did you see was, was going on there? And was it similar yeah. to that 16 game where they were moving before the snap and you guys appeared to look like you'd never seen it before? Yeah, there was one uh, where they stemmed late and it got us. Uh, so they did a good job on that one. A um, couple of them were just fed. 
you know, being a young player in that environment. And uh, he wasn't the one that jumped, but the way our cadence worked, it, it threw off the timing of a couple things with him and Bradbury. So things that we corrected after it happened and didn't bother us the rest of the game, but early in the game it affected us. Last year's seniors uh, really laid a good foundation in a lot of ways. They had to overcome some adversity. Uh, as, you, as you take a look at that example, is that something you think the, the current players can draw off of? Possibly. I mean, obviously we lost a tough game at Notre Dame last year and bounced back and started playing really well again. And uh, in a similar fashion, we had some guys dinged up at Notre Dame last year, just like we did in this game. And so, you know, I think our guys yesterday, the message was very clear on, on how we need to move forward. And they were all on board with that. And we need to learn from what happened and why and get better and get ready to play a really important game. A broken record here, and I apologize, but you kept Ryan in that game pretty late. Mm -hmm. Were you just trying to get him jump started, trying to get him to have some confidence moving forward? I just felt like that that was the best thing. You know, we talked about Matt going in the series before he did at the end, and uh, probably could have, just didn't. I mean, it wasn't a long, drawn out conversation, but just felt like he could go in and drive us down the field. And we talk about finishing, and at that point in the game, felt like we could drive and score still. Anything else? All right, guys.